was a, an attempted coup. This was an attempted takedown of a president. And we beat them. We beat them. So the Mueller report, when they talk about obstruction, what, we fight back. And you know why we fight back? Because I knew how illegal this whole thing was. It was a scam. I have not read the Mueller report. I haven't seen the re Mueller report. As far as I'm concerned, I don't care about the Mueller report. I've been totally exonerated. No collusion, no obstruction. So even though he supposedly hasn't seen the Mueller report, he's still convinced that it totally exonerates him and he seems to be an island of one on that. There are still open questions about obstruction of justice, of course, and in the meantime, the Attorney General William Barr appeared before a Senate committee today. Yesterday, he was grilled by the House. Barr there said the Mueller report would be released within a week, but it will be redacted. That then prompting Democrats to threaten subpoena to get the whole thing released. Today was the Senate's turn, and Barr, he was asked about reports saying that he's assembled a team to scrutinize how the Russia probe got started in the first place and how the FBI has handled things. This a portion of the exchange. I am going to be reviewing uh, both the genesis and the conduct of intelligence activities directed uh, at the, the Trump campaign during 2016. You're not suggesting, though, that spying occurred? I don't, uh, well, uh, I guess you could, I, I think there was a spying did occur. Yes, I think spying did occur. Congress is usually very concerned about intelligence agencies and law enforcement agencies staying in their proper lane, and I want to make sure that happened. Jeffrey Jakobowicz, he joins us. He's an attorney. He has represented White House officials who were subjects of independent counsel investigations. And uh, Jeffrey, reaction reportedly from the Justice Department, from the FBI, and also from folks in the Senate and members of the intelligence committees, the House committees, they say they don't know where Barr is coming up with any of this. And moreover, they're shocked that he seems to be far more forthcoming about the concerns of the origins than he was about being transparent whatsoever about some of the findings about what, when the report would be released or what would be in the report, what wouldn't, et cetera. What did you take from today and yesterday's hearings as it relates to the attorney general's priorities? Well, it seems like he is coming up with this uh, directly from President Trump and David Nunes, for example, uh, and saying he will investigate the investigators. He, he didn't say that they had done anything wrong, and it could be if he investigates the investigators, it will show that nothing was done wrong, and that will become public and, and really eliminate that argument from the White House. In terms of his testimony, uh, transparency is essentially out the door, and what we have is Barr basically being very careful and redacting the final report. He never promised he would show anyone on the Hill the final report, certainly not the public. And we will see approximately in a week what he will produce. But, Jeffrey, let's go from the bar at the confirmation hearings to the bar that we heard today and yesterday. Confirmation hearings, you know, there was two things that stood out. He's Mr. Transparency. He was all for you know, sunlight is the best disinfectant with this thing. And then reportedly Trump, you know, going apoplectic when he finds out then that the bars and the Mullers, uh, you know, dined together and were BFFs or all the rest. Anybody who had concerns, fear or not, that Barr was going to become a political animal in this process and not an unbiased referee, they seem to at least have some justification for concern today. I mean, wasn't the role of the inspector general out of all this to be doing some of this? It seems to invalidate at least that role or at least say he doesn't trust what the IG will come up with. Well, the IG, who's a very distinguished IG, should be investigating uh, what transpired previously. Apparently, the AG is taking it over to some extent, and it's becoming more political, obviously. And the attorney general speaking maybe to an audience of one, and that would be the president, has decided he will make his own investigation. Uh, we have to wait, though, until the report comes out, because there could be information in the report that was not redacted. Uh, ultimately, he has some intelligence uh, issues because he has to turn over to the House 
uh, House Intelligence Committee uh, various issues related to the investigation, and so he will not be able to redact in full what the report says about that. There was one other additional piece of news about the redactions, or at least what wouldn't be redacted. He said that President Trump being a public figure wouldn't be in that category of folks, private individuals that were not indicted, um, and as a result here would have information as one of those uh, caveats that they would be redacted, let's say, in the final report as to not impugn their reputation, but the president wouldn't be considered one of them. Significant or not? Well, Richard, you know, that's a good question because what he's really doing is stretching what his obligations are. And really, what he has to focus on is Rule 6E, uh, grand jury material, which is supposed to be secretive. Uh, the D.C. Circuit just came out with a recent decision indicating uh, that material should not be released on the, unless there were another investigation going on, although there are exceptions to it. And uh, that could force uh, the House Democrats to start uh, at least preliminary impeachment proceedings because that would be, quote, another investigation, and then they would be entitled to the grand, the grand jury material. Jeffrey, I know you saw the uh, Wall Street Journal story today, which it said that uh, uh, some important figures in Trump's inner circle, including Hope Hicks, uh, Schiller is uh, a security guy from his private world, that they shared and were cooperative uh, during the investigation over those hush money payments with the Playboy model and the, uh, and the uh, porn star. In and of itself, what does that tell you? And also, what does it tell you that we do have these parallel investigations going on elsewhere? Who's running the Southern District, the Eastern District? Does that have to go through DOJ? And does Barr get to tip the scales if he wants? Well, Richard, I, I always thought the Southern District investigation uh, was the investigation that Trump should be fearful of. And generally, they are offer on their own. They bring their own investigations. They're supervised by the Attorney General. The Attorney General never had much control over the Southern District. And there could be an internal battle uh, if Barr tries to uh, prevent the Southern District from bringing any cases. Clearly, the campaign finance issue and the payments pre-election are issues that Trump is exposed on, and the Southern District has many different options, even if they decide not to indict a sitting president. One other question. You know how the Beltway works. At the end of the day, it's my thought, and you tell me if I'm wrong, inevitably, you know, three people can't keep a secret, let alone the thousands that are involved with this. The idea that this report will not see the light of day in its true form, the idea that we will not hear from Mueller or the 19 prosecutors who put this report together, isn't that wishful thinking for Trump and allies as if somehow, some way, the American public will be kept in the dark at the, at the conclusion of this sort of thing? Well, the, the House will sue. Uh, they will issue a subpoena. They will sue and try to have it resolved in front of the chief judge in the district court in D.C. Uh, if it goes to the House, chances are it will be leaked. But it may not go to the House in, in unredacted form. And it's not clear who will leak. It could be Democrats uh, who want to get it out. It could be Republicans who have concerns about Trump running in 2020. Jeffrey, I appreciate a few minutes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. All right, everybody, when we come back, I'm going to bring our legal panel in, and they're going to take a look at new developments in the college admission scandal, Varsity Blues, as it's known. One of the actresses involved pleaded guilty, did a big mea culpa. Another one says no, and now she's facing new charges. We're going to take a look and peel back how prosecutors are really handling the case and whether these ladies could be facing some prison time. That and more after this.